All right, guys, hope you're well. So, party brewing video. We haven't done one of these in what feels like an age. So uh, it's about time we do one. Now, we're going down the super simple line. Nothing too complicated, something that anyone can do. Hopefully, if you burn baked beans, probably not something you wanna do. But we're gonna be taking some very, very simple sugar. And we're gonna be making some caramel shots because, well, caramel shots are tasty and sugar does make caramel. Very, very easy. So this is going to work out at about 20% when it's finished. The joys of using Alcotec. Now, the reason that I'm using it is because then I don't need to go through the hassle of using freeze distillation to concentrate it down to make it a higher percentage. 20% is more than adequate for what we need to do. You could freeze distill it as well if you wanted to make something stronger, but we're just keeping it nice and simple. So a couple of kilos of sugar will set you back £1.20, £1.30. The Alcotec yeast, even though we're going to be only using a little bit to make a gallon batch, it's about £4 or £5, pounds, depending on where you get it. And then the 5 litre water container is about £1.10, so you can make all of this for well under £10. Pounds which is good and it will taste fantastic at the same time so that's cool so let's begin so the setup is pretty straightforward i've got my five liter water container currently being sterilized using dish soap and thin bleach cheap bleach cheaper the better just letting you know cheapest bleach is the best bleach for this but use whatever sanitizer you want so i've got two kilos of sugar i have a thick bottom pan thick thick bottom pan it just transfers the heat easier you don't get hot spots and it's less likely to burn um, I use it for all of my burning stuff videos because it's a really good pan have a wooden spoon don't worry never be afraid because we're using heat that is going to sterilize it as well as the pan so nothing needs to be sterilized apart from the demijohn and the hydrometer which is also in there aha uh -huh. so <laughs> let's begin Right, so the first step is to dump the sugar in the pan, because, well, you've got to caramelize it. In she goes. That is a lot of sugar. Yep, that's a lot of sugar. So we're going to have to do this in two batches, because, well, I can't fit two kilos of sugar in here. Plus, we are going to be adding some water, boiling water. Never add cold water to it, it explodes and goes wild. So uh, let's, let's begin the process. On goes the heat. And just remember, we're not making candies, so we can stir it. Oh yes. We can stir it, and we don't need a thermometer because we're going off our eyes. We want something that looks a lot like golden syrup. So uh, golden in color. This could take a few minutes. So it's been a few minutes, and I've got this on a low heat setting, because we're Slow and steady wins the race. There is a lot of sugar in here. And uh, well, if we have it on too hot, what's gonna end up happening is we burn all the bottom and the top doesn't get a mix. So just keep going in and it will start forming. Uh, let's see, molten sugar is hot. Don't do this. I just wanna, it's looking uh, very hot. Funny that, almost like molten sugar is hot, but it is ah, browning up nicely to that beautiful, caramel color. So uh, I'm just going to keep going and uh, I'll see you in another few minutes. Right, so a couple of minutes later it is turning lovely and brown. Now it does have lumps in there because well we stirred it to make sure it just didn't blacken and that's cool because uh, we're going to be adding water to this to stop it from caramelizing anymore. Now it is a freshly boiled kettle. I mean never use cold water so this is about the right consistency it has a toffee like color but it is going to be watered down so it will turn golden so you know, you know how it goes so that is pretty damn oh, liquid before it all stops i mean most of it is molten oh this is the bit i hate now only a tiny bit of water if you're going to do this do it at least as safe as you can. Boiling water. 
and just add a little bit until it stops making that horrible hissing noise, little by little. And then mix in the water. Right, so the hot water has now cooled the sugar down. Did it very carefully, so it's now solid again. But there is a lovely dark color, almost a bit toffee-ish. I think I, uh, toffee -ish? Yeah, whatever. Uh, toffee-esque. I think I overdid it very slightly. But considering that the actual, there we go, I'll grab some of the sugar looks like golden syrup. Um, well, the color of golden syrup. It smells so good though. But it didn't burn, so uh, it's not black, which is good. So now we switch on the heat again and let this simmer and it will dissolve the sugar back into the water solution making a lovely uh, sugar syrup and that's what we're going to be using. So this could take a couple of minutes. Let's try and get it unstuck. <sighs> Stuff like cement. So this has now been simmering away for uh, five, ten minutes, something like that. And most of those chunky nubbins have disappeared and it's pretty much all dissolved. Oh, you know, I should change the name. It's not caramel now. It smells a lot like toffee. Caramel slash toffee. Either way, my mistake, but it's still gonna taste good because toffee shots, it's still great. So gonna turn this off now. Pretty much all those chunks have disintegrated. So I quickly scorched, what's the word? A sieve, and I've got my cheekily scorched pan. Because, well, I need to do the other kilo of sugar and I can't put it in the demi jam. So, hopefully, this should filter out the chunks because we can't use the chunks. I was just about to lick the spoon there, like molten sugar syrup. Oh, it looks good. It looks so good. So, let's strain this out first and then check out the color. And we've got a few chunky chunks. Just a couple, and considering how many there were, that's hardly any. And I can always chuck these back into the boil for the next one to dissolve so we still have all that sugar. So uh, I'm just gonna rinse this out and we're gonna start the process again. So everything is rinsed. I've done that step because, well, there was sugar in there. And since we're gonna be caramelizing the next batch, I don't want the remains of the old batch to burn. Because, you know, it's it's already cooked, but it hasn't been. I'm just going to dry out my pan, and uh, I won't bore you with the details. We'll just skip ahead and see you when uh, it gets interesting. So this one is now good to go. So I've turned off the heat, I've boiled the kettle, and I've left it a little bit more chunky. See if you can hear this, how hot it is. Oh yeah. Now, I've stopped this one slightly early. Uh, unlike the last one, I let go molten, but I did it slowly so it didn't burn. Uh, this one is, ah, oh, steam. Learn from my mistakes. Uh, this one is still more sugary and based to hopefully get a lighter color. But it smells good, so uh, I'm not gonna argue with that. Uh, and a bit more. We wanna stop it from browning as quickly as possible. Add in a bit more boiling water. Right, now that's almost cooled down, which is cool. And now we're going to heat it through to dissolve all the chunks and make it into a lovely syrupy, tasty caramel thing. See you in a bit. So it's been simmering for uh, about 10 minutes. 
and pretty much all of those chunks are gone. Good enough. I mean, they're pretty much all gone. Maybe one or two little lumps in there, but that's cool. I mean, we don't mind a little bit of wastage. There's no point carrying on boiling this for hours just uh, to get rid of a couple of small chunks. So all we're gonna do is strain this through our strainer just to remove those chunks since the yeast isn't gonna ferment it. I mean, look at that, that is it's looking good. And just a couple of chunks right at the end. Yeah. Close enough to our two kilos, so there we go. And now we have molten magma. It smells really good. It is a caramel toffee sort of hybrid. Hybrid? Hybrid. Yeah. Can't speak today. So it is way too hot for us to do anything cool with it. So I'm going to stick it in a cold water bath, um, or my sink filled with cold water. So I will see you in about 20 minutes. Yeah. So 20 minutes later, and this is now cold to the touch. Very slightly warm, but we're going to be adding some cold water, so it all works itself out. So I have gone ahead and rinsed my lovely sterilized 5 liter water container. It smells fresh and not bleachy. Yes, you do need to rinse out bleach. I've also got a scorched funnel and my hydrometer that is sitting in just some cold water. So, this is the bit we've all been waiting for. On goes this. You don't need the funnel, but uh, I make a mess every single time. So I no longer need this. I mean, whoa, it's thickened up. So uh, let's pour it in. That is looking thick and lovely. You can see the colour is uh, it's pretty dark, but we are going to be watering this down. But it is crystal clear and looking pretty good. So I'm going to rinse my lovely pan out using the kettle. Now it has cold water in there because the kettle's been boiled a couple of times. So it's definitely sterile on the inside. So you could use tap water straight from the tap. But that involves moving and uh, I don't want to do that. This microphone kind of drags. And there we go, get all the, the sugar this syrup. There we go. So now let's just top it up. That should be good. Right, now we need to give it a damn good shaking to mix in all this sugar, because, well, that is a pretty thick syrup at the bottom there. And it will reveal the color. And it's aerating it as well. For those people that worry about aeration, more than enough. And there we go, and it does have a pretty nice golden color. Almost like we planned it, almost. So let's put the hydrometer in and let's see how high it goes up. So we're expecting somewhere around 20%, so, or 22%, but 21.5. So let's see what this comes out at. Is it gonna max the hydrometer? What do you know? It's maxed out the hydrometer. So, um, yeah, I'd say we're somewhere around the 20% mark because there doesn't have a reading. It, it, yeah, I mean, it's right at the, it, it, yeah, there's just no point. So yeah, it's pretty high on the hydrometer scale. Yep. So we're just going to work off the sugar content that we added in, so it's about 22%. I don't know why we use the hydrometer, just out of habit. So 
What we've got now is we've got some turbo yeast. This is an open one, because well, I've used it already, but you, you can use a fresh one if you don't have an open one. So I'm feeling a bit special. Right, so this is probably going to be a rapid fermentation. And since we've got 22% uh, in here, I'm gonna add three of these. Since it has all the nutrients and energizer and the yeast as well, that should be more than enough, in theory. So now we just stick the lid on the top. We're not gonna do the uh, little 1 8 of 10 because this is supposed to be kind of a rapid fermentation. So uh, now we just leave it alone. So in theory, this should take about two and a half weeks. That's the plan, ish. Now it is a little bit colder in my house, so it's not optimum temperature. That's why we've accounted for the extra time. But usually this will be done in about seven days. Just put it out there. So I really hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Don't forget to check out some of the other ones and, you know, share and subscribe and, you know, do all those cool stuff that you do, you know by now. So carry on homebrewing. See you later.